All right, what is up, y'all? It's the Sandman. Back at it again with another one from Live at the Moor, Alice in Chains. Uh, the first track off of this was Man in the Box, and it was absolutely insane. Um, make sure y'all check that out. It's already been posted. But, yeah, next one is Real Thing. Shout out to the commenter and the um, giving us the whole set list and the timestamps and everything like that. But... This is another one off of Facelift. So let's see how it goes. Um, can't wait. This whole thing's based off of that that constant riff throughout the whole song. Um, has a cool octave effect because it's rooted on that that E note, that E power chord kind of um, shape, but not exactly. Um, and then going to the the F power chord and da 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 da, so it sounds really heavy. Um, the classic like half step changes from first fret to open always never go wrong with that but just the way he builds up and escalates the whole song lane does is just a work of art because he has so much you know dynamic to his voice the rasp the clean tone the little grungy the err uh, sound that he does like the marbles in your mouth effect um he has so many tools to work with he can change the whole mood just from section to section and you just keep on your edge of your seat um not many people can do that so yeah the, and the rasp it just sounds so badass in this um and he's just doing it effortlessly you can tell Look at that. What an embellishment. Yeah, I forgot about that part too. The dun, 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 that part, um, it sounds different though, because I, I have heard the studio from uh, version of this one, um, but it sounds different. It sounds more twangy. Maybe it's just the tone, um, but it's cool. It sounds sounds different. It sounds a little funkier, but overall, that entry, that entry into the chorus, is just so badass. It's so epic. That's something I'm replaying for sure. Right here.
wow. Look at that, the way he dips on those notes. When he says nowhere, just the way he delivers those vowel sounds. And again, you know, these guys, just to point out the, they use a lot of octave based riffing um, from what I've noticed. Um, in this same part of the song, where uh, I'll just play it, he just played those single notes right here. Before going to the second, the second bridge, um, the going down the steps part, um, initially he played the low, uh, I don't know what note it was, but he played on the low strings. It was like, -na 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 -na, then bam, right into this transition. Now he plays it a, like level up, so an octave up. Um, so it's just cool to see those go-to tricks that they do. to be back such a warm welcome don't you guys have anything better to do and <laughs> nope didn't figure all you'd make it in the snow but uh I guess you did your best in the snow snow is not gonna stop me from going to something like that no way uh it's got to be hurricane times like a hundred to keep me from getting to that show for sure um but yeah i love also um the way they add that heaviness to the uh the bridge part the the white line whatever you could almost call it like a second chorus could happen like three or four times in the whole song but anyways when they pause they use those like um the whole rhythm section as a unit just like uh bam 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 so it's like Going down the steps on the bam, 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 while he's singing white line on top of it. So it's like a really cool, like kind of like if you're at a club or something and the lights are just kind of on and they're floating around, but then during the, like when the beat drops or something like that, it just starts flashing, goes pitch black and starts flashing and flashing. That's what it, that's the kind of effect it has from a, um, audio, pers auditory perspective. You know what I mean? That's what it reminds me of, but. It's just great. And it also reminds me of a um, song off Led Zeppelin's first album, too. How many more times? And I think they're both actually the last song off of each record. I think this closes out the Face Loop record. And uh, how many more? I'm pretty sure it's how many more times. Same kind of riff structure, song structure um, based around that, that main riff. And it kind of sounds similar, too, like the timing and everything. But 
I don't know. I have to. I have to listen to that song again right now. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of just epicness in this track. This is like it's not super complex, but it doesn't need to be. It's just got the raw energy. It's just the raw track. The vocals are just just pure, just like direct, in your face, aggressive, and everything. And the song itself is just pretty much like. Yeah, it's just kind of the same. A lot of those themes of like um, drug abuse, just not giving it, not giving a shit about about it. You know what I mean? Um, just indulging, reckless indulgence, rec with reckless abandon. You know what I mean? That's what this song kind of reminds me of. Um, but yeah, so so far this is this was epic. Um, yeah, definitely gonna close this this whole uh, set out. So make sure, stay tuned for that, but that's it for me. Banger, 10 out of 10. Peace.